Request for approval of library proposal to sell $2 million general obligation bonds in order to proceed with plans for library. You're up. Good evening. I assume this is recorded, so for the record, my name is B.J. Deppie. I represent the Johnson County Public Library. With me are Tom Armour, who is the president of the library board, uh, Beverly Martin, who is the library director, and Ann Alexander, I'm not sure what the title is, director of the Franklin Branch or manager or... Okay. Uh, one of the steps in issuing general obligation bonds uh, is to uh, bring this uh, before you for approval. Um, <coughs> I will defer to uh, Tom and probably more particularly to Bev for any questions you have about uh, what we propose to do with the funds, tax rates, and all of those things that are generally of interest. Uh, unless you have any specific legal questions, I would defer to them on the financial type questions. Could I start out by um, asking either, <coughs> sorry, you're, either you, BJ, or, or our legal counsel to kind of maybe explain what you are doing in front of us and what our requirement is by this council so that they'll, so they'll understand the process. Uh, one of the requirements to issue general obligation bonds is approval uh, by the overseeing governmental entity. Frankly, there is some question of what that entity is. Um, the, um, I was on the library board a long time ago, and if you had asked me who formed the original Franklin Public Library, I would have said City of Franklin. Uh, we recently got into the history of that, and it appears that it was formed by Johnson County, uh, strangely enough. Um, but th and we haven't nailed that down, or, but that's what it appears to be. So in, um, <coughs> In an excess of caution, uh, rather than going only before the Johnson County Council uh, for authorization for these bonds, we are coming to both bodies uh, so that uh, if there's any question later about which body was the correct body, we will have been to both, um, if that answers your question. But one of the steps of, of GO bonds is getting uh, an approval to issue those bonds from whatever city or county oversees the, the library in question. Uh, same thing in a different context. Um, I was in front of the county council a couple of months ago uh, for bonds for the, uh, has nothing to do with you, the Barbersville Community Fire Protection District. And we were there for the same thing to get approval from the county council to issue bonds. So this is exactly that. You still have to go through appropriating them, you have to sell them, you have to go through all of that, but you, you have to start here, or at the county as the case may be, uh, before you can jump through the other hoops. So this is one bond issue of $2 million, not two separate bond issues? No, this is one bond issue of $2 million. Um, it's for costs of purchasing real estate and preliminary expenses related to site investigation, like doing soil borings in phase one and two, uh, environmental studies, uh, that sort of thing. It, it is not to build a library. It is a preliminary, acquire real estate, do engineering studies, do site investigations. It is not a $28 billion bond issue to build a library. Okay, now, to, to follow up on that, then Rob, what is our responsibility, or how, would, how is the sound here receiving as far as public hearing as far as asking questions as far as taking a vote um, what's our procedure here well the, the statute the statute is the state rule that governs us on this and all it says is that the fiscal body which is the city council needs to approve the project uh, that approval could be done by ordinance resolution or voice vote my preference is a resolution so working with the library's council one has been prepared I approve of the language of the resolution you will have to decide whether you approve the project um, if it's done by uh, a, a public hearing is not required uh, you are certainly able to take uh, questions uh, or comments if you'd like to it's also unusual in that it won't require the mayor's involvement it's purely the fiscal body so the resolution is set up for the city council to sign with the clerk testing 
Uh, it can be done tonight. It can be uh, considered tonight as an introduction is not required, uh, then brought back at a subsequent meeting. You, you have uh, uh, really whatever, however you want to handle it. It's, it's okay. Okay. Any further information you want to <coughs> supply or go over about the project before we start asking questions? Overview. Probably. Come on up there. It's probably simpler for you to answer, ask questions. I did. I did bring some materials for distribution to you this evening, so that with, uh, in talking with. Um, a few of you, just some general questions that I've been asked um, in terms of, um, you know, why are we at this stage? Why are we looking at a library? We have one um, that's now going on 23 years old. And the first piece, Anne's going to pass these out and just sort of, if we can send them by way of Craig on down. The first one is a, a, a conclusive uh, study that was done back in April of 2005, and you can see listed on the back are the participants. It was a, a community advisory group that the library board pulled together when we started looking at a strategic plan that was in place at the time and realized that we were totally out of space. We were outgrowing um, the ability to, to meet the needs that we were being asked for from members of the community. And so there were several recommendations that were made here. And at the time, we had hoped to keep the Trafalgar and the Franklin Project on course simultaneously. This group advised that we separate those two projects. And as you know, we now have built and, and are in our second year in our, uh, well, moving towards our second year in our beautiful Trafalgar library. Um, we had been working with an architectural firm that was advising us that we could potentially build on the site that we were located. If you remember what was happening at the time Brannigan Boulevard was going in place, we took advantage of some of the redevelopment and the sidewalks, the, the curbs that could be increased at that time, and went ahead and purchased two uh, properties that are north of our current building. At the same time, there were two south of the building that came online and were up for sale, and because we were at the board at the time was being advised that that was feasible, we purchased those as well. In the meantime, we decided to engage this advisory group. They started looking at some of the actual plans that were developed by a, the then architectural firm that built the Trafalgar Library, and we realized the only feasible way we could build meet the space needs that we had done in our programming at that time, how the amount of parking would be to tear down the current building and start over. If you don't know the site, it's kind of an arrow-shaped site along the railroad track there. It was at one time um, a piece of college property that the um, board 25 years ago purchased. And so while why we are here tonight is to do a study, as BJ outlined, to um, look at needs assessment, feasibility studies, update the program that's now five years old for Franklin to make sure that it's on track, and um, and get ready for um, a lot of public input. We'll have we'll be holding public meetings um, and see what the project's going to look like. Uh, the next thing that I've I ask Ian to pass down to you is a wonderful article. I'm not going to ask you to sit here and read it tonight, but this is what are libraries today doing for our communities? We